Hi, this is Janos. It's Real World Audio Christmas Special. And uh, today we are going to have a look at something truly wonderful. And uh, we are looking right now at Sheldon Marcellus's Void Pipes from Canada. And uh, this is the really, really special moment that, that I, I want to share during this time of the year. Something that, that's about you, uh, that's about uh, the online community, audiophiles, music lovers around the world. And I think this is something so much more beautiful than just me talking about giving you new ideas. This is about the ideas turning into reality. And uh, thank you, Sheldon so much for sending your photos and, uh, and your feedback on your build. And, um, and let's, let's just uh, see more pictures. Look. Uh, so what happened here is that Sheldon built the void pipes based on uh, the advice that he heard on my YouTube channel. And he chose the Audio Nirvana Super 8 drivers uh, for them. And you see he added this really nice touch that the bass curves out. And uh, let me just get it back so we can go to the next one. So here it's in his room. And uh, as you see, the the cabling is done so that the wires are connected directly to the drivers and then you can just internally connect to the terminals and then you can drop it down and connect it directly to the amplifier and then you don't break it with the binding post and uh, this is a nice little upgrade that you can do for any loudspeaker and actually truly you can do it with only with single <laughs> driver speakers but if you have a multi-driver speaker you do the same thing you can directly connect it but in that case directly to the crossover just bypassing the binding post here what i can uh, recommend a little bit is to when you have the speaker uh, cable coming out like to the base here attach it, uh, secure it there with a, maybe a ladder strap. That's what I did on my AO speakers. Uh, that's how they were set up. So, so there like a, a ladder strap secures the speaker cable so that in case you trip over it or maybe the dog, dog trips over or starts to chew on the speaker cable, then it doesn't get yanked because this way if it gets yanked then and uh, with force, then if it breaks off the tab from the uh, loudspeaker, the driver itself, and it tears out the tinsel wire that can uh, just permanently destroy the driver. I mean, doesn't destroy it, but then you have to recone it and get a new voice coil for it. So basically, in that case, the driver need, will need rebuilding. And in most cases, that uh, translates to uh, really special care and, uh, and mostly it's easier to just buy new drivers in that case. So anyway, that's a little uh, security advice, but this is like a hot rodding thing, directly connecting it to the amplifier. And it, it's, it's something good and it's a big upgrade to the sound. And, uh, oops, let's, let's go back here. So when you look at uh, Sheldon's system, what is he using with the void pipes? He is using tube amplification. He uses a type 45 amplifier built by Oliver Says and a type 76 preamplifier also built by Oliver Says. And I have mentioned Oliver Says already he has a lot of his amplifiers showcased on the Going the Dark audio website. I can really, really highly recommend uh, that you 
get familiar with him, with his name, and, and if you are interested in buying a tube amplifier or preamplifier that uh, that has musicality in the number one place and no hype and no marketing in it, it's just uh, a, a, a one man, one man, well, that's his name, Oliver says, and, and he's building tube amplifiers and uh, and he can build one for you if you look him up and uh, and what he builds is our amplifiers and preamps that I would build myself and testament to that is that uh, this uh, preamplifier maybe let's go to the next picture we can see it better so on top that's the type 76 preamplifier and on the bottom that's the power supply of the preamp. So it's a two chassis preamplifier. And um, uh, so basically it's, it's a Bergman, Bruce Bergman uh, was the person who, who created the uh, schematics for it and published it in Sound Practices way, way back. I think it, it was uh, issue number 16 where he published it. And I also built the Berman 76 preamplifier and I think here we can see that uh, Oliver did his own version on the power supply uh, actually I did the same thing I did a different power supply than the original Bergman uh, design asked for and uh, I think it's it's the most fantastic preamplifier I ever run across and uh, and if you want something absolutely stunning, I, well, I, first of all, I don't recommend any commercial preamplifiers. I haven't really run across any of them that I would recommend for for a sane price and um, even for a very high price. Well, I can't really recommend anything, but what I can recommend is build a type 76 preamp and uh, in case you don't know how to build well Oliver says build them so that's my I think my <laughs> first ever preamplifier recommendation that I actually recommend anyone to buy before I had like a preamplifier week this year and I went through a couple of preamplifiers but uh, uh, I, I did not really recommend them to purchase them unless you really want to, but I would not buy any of those. However, if, if I were in a position that I couldn't build one for myself, then I would buy this, the, the Oliver Says Type 76, the Bergman 76. It's, it's truly something special, in case I haven't mentioned it yet. So, <laughs> uh, also, the amplifier is a Type 45 amplifier, which is a direct heated triode. And uh, in case you guys were ever wondering uh, why this uh, system, uh, why Sheldon system is, is, is so special, because it also reminds me a lot of my, of my darling system that I had for many many years and, and which is and was really absolutely fabulous. Uh, so after I built my void pipe uh, then I was running it uh, also with that type 76 preamp the Bergman 76 and uh, a 1.5 watt per channel amplifier same output as here we see with the uh, 45 tubes but it's my double DC darling amplifier so the tubes are a little bit different but uh, similar idea similar uh, I'm well not similar exact same power output so in case you guys are wondering that if you want to build a void pipe what will 1.5 watts per channel give to you and I've been talking about this a lot and probably you are really bored to hear all of these things. So let me just read out from uh, Sheldon's email 
what he thinks about the void pipe, how, what are his impressions. So here it is. The voids are amazing in this system and room. Baroque has always been my favorite, so beautiful with void pipes. They are facing out to a 24 foot room and perpendicular to them the room opens to 20 foot, uh, 24 foot dimension. I am getting prodigious and natural bass. Pipe organ pedals are there. And now I just uh, in inject my commentary here. Yes, he is talking about a single driver void pipe driven by 1.5 watt per channel flea power amplifier. And in case you didn't hear it, I am getting prodigious and natural bass. Pipe organ pedals are there. And a nice surprise, I thought my 80s copy of Led Zeppelin II was crappy. Not on the void pipes. It was alive and raunchy with amazing bass and drums. Now, I think this is something that a lot of you have been asking for, that okay, okay, we already know that it sounds good with uh, classical music, but how about rock? Well, there you got it. <laughs> Led Zeppelin II is really something that, that, that has a sonic character very far from, uh, from classical music, but you see it sounds awesome, and even though, uh, based on Sheldon's uh, uh, report, using other speakers, he thought it was crappy and, and didn't, not sounding good. No. So here, in, in contrast to that, now he has excellent bass and amazing drums. So I think uh, this is something, something really fantastic and I would also like to uh, read out his uh, closing words. Thanks again so much for your knowledge and inspiration. My system is beyond anything I ever imagined thanks to you. And of course, has room to grow. But where to stop? Cheers. So, thank you Sheldon so much for, uh, for sharing this with me, with, with the channel. And uh, actually he shared this with me already a little while ago, about a month ago. But I really decided to show it at Christmas time because <laughs> I think this is really the best time to share it with you all and um, and just uh, keep it as a, as a as a Christmas surprise. And also, uh, Sheldon was asking in his email and sharing that he did not put any filling on the top portion of the pipe. And my my response to that is that that's the best possible scenario. So if, if it sounds great without any feeling whatsoever, don't put feeling in it. So that's the goal to, to make it sound good with as, less, as little feel as possible, because when you add the feel, then it's like taking a, a wild Mustang and turning it into a domesticated horse. And uh, in case the, the sound is unbalanced that you get in your room and it's usually more of a function of the room than the speaker itself, then you need to add some filling. But if your rooms are, are good with it, it's a good match with your rooms, then no filling is the best thing. Because when you start to add filling, then you start to make the sound more, more domesticated, more anemic at the same time and a very noticeable drop in efficiency and dynamics. So, so when people say that, okay, I, I filled my void pipe a lot, now it sounds much more like a commercial speaker, they are quite right, but what those stories lack is that those people uh, don't report that there was a major drop in efficiency and dynamics. And usually they don't report because they don't notice it, they just crank the volume a little bit louder and notice that, okay, it's, uh, it sounds a little similar but more compressed, but I kind of getting more bass. Uh, they would f really hear it much better if they would to remove the, all the stuffing and realize, oh, oh crap, there was much more gone than what I thought. So. So this is the best possible scenario without any feeling and, um, 
in case you guys were wondering, this is another excellent choice. Audio Nirvana, Super 8 for the void pipes. And um, thank you, Shadon. Thank you, team. And have a wonderful end of the year. Have a wonderful new year. Bye-bye.